Hello, thank you for joining me on day three of Snowflake Summit. Uh, my name is Sorin Shah and I'm a product manager in Snowflake working on all things storage. So today I'm going to talk about S3 compatible external stages and all the use cases in Snowflake that you can drive with S3 compatible use cases, external stages. So until now, Snowflake has supported uh, unstructured files or blobs uh, from that are either stored in Snowflake or they are stored in cloud provider storage like uh, S3 or ADLS or GCS. Today, Snowflake is expanding the broadening the spectrum of this uh, to unstructured data or files that are stored on S3 compatible stages. Now, what are S3 compatible devices? So this can be on-prem devices like Dell or Pure or NetApp or uh, Hitachi, or they can also be cloud-based storage services uh, like Cloudflare or Minio or Wasabi. All they need to have is an S3 compatible endpoint so Snowflake can reach out. So let's see a quick demo. So I'm going to, for the demo, I'm going to use uh, three different types of services, Cloudflare R2, I'm going to use Wasabi, and I'm going to use an on-prem Dell ECS storage. So here you can see my Cloudflare R2 account. I have a demo, uh, I have a bucket called Summit Demo. In the bucket, I have a folder called Snowpark, which has some PDF images, which I can process using Snowpark Python. I do have a folder called Appliances, and Appliances has images, which I can process using the newly launched Document AI application. And lastly, I have a folder called Parquet, which has some files, Parquet files, which I can use or process uh, using external tables in Snowflake. Similarly, I have Wasabi, uh, and I have a demo in Wasabi where I have a similar folder structure, and I have the Dell EC, EMC or ECS test drive as well. So let's look at some code. So here I have my Snowflake account, and one may naturally ask the question, like how can Snowflake uh, connect to this S3 compatible storage providers? So the answer is simple. You create a stage, uh, specifically an external stage. So here I'm creating an R2 external stage. I'm providing a URL to my bucket on R2. I have to use the S3 compat scheme. I have to provide the endpoint. So endpoint is the endpoint to my R2 storage account. And lastly, I have to provide credentials so that Snowflake can query the or connect to the R2 storage account. So those credentials, they follow the AWS pattern. So I have to provide like AWS key ID and the secret key. Lastly, I'm using a directory table on the, on the external stage. So directory table really makes it easy for you to get, get a catalog of all of the files on your stage uh, into a table. And you can just query it I like a table so you don't have to run expensive list commands. So let's see here, I'm creating a or running a select command on the directory table. It responded back with all of the files that I have stored on my R2 account over here. So you will see the same files over here. Likewise, I can create an external stage for Wasabi as well. And in sim very similar fashion, I can provide a URL to my demo account or a bucket on to my demo account on Wasabi. I have to provide the endpoint, which is a Wasabi endpoint. And I have to provide the credentials, which is the AWS key ID and the secret key. Uh, similarly, I can do a select star from the directory so that I can browse all of the files that are stored on my Wasabi account. So here you see all of the files that are stored on my Wasabi. And lastly, very similarly, I can do something with a Dell account as well, a Dell ECS, where I provide the endpoint, I provide the key ID and the secret key, and, and I can do that. So let's say naturally, you know, Snowflake can connect to S3 compatible devices, but customers started asking like, how can I import or export data from my storage providers to Snowflake? and likewise export data from Snowflake to my storage providers. So to do that, we are launching a new functionality called Copy Files. Copy Files is an extremely simple functionality, but a yet a very powerful functionality. All it does is copies files or copies blobs from one storage provider to another storage provider or one location to another location. So here you can see a Copy Files command where I am copying data into a Snowflake internal stage from my R2 external stage, uh, specifically the appliances folder on my R2 external stage. If I run this command, Snowflake is going to copy the JPEG files from this folder to internal stage. And that returned very quickly. 
So if I go and run a select on the directory, you will see that all the JPEG files have been copied from R2 to internal page. Now, if you listen carefully, like I mentioned that copy files can copy files from one location to another or one storage provider to another. Very similarly, like you can use copy files to copy files from say R2 to Wasabi or say Wasabi to Dell storage as well. Uh, it's very, very flexible. Uh, I'm not sure like if customers will have use cases for that, but it's really flexible. So now let's do another demo for external tables. So I mentioned that in my cloud storage account or Cloudflare storage account, I have a parquet file in the parquet folder. So what I can do in Snowflake is I can create an external table called user data. This is a very simple external table. It's a schema-less external table. The location is R2 external stage slash parquet. The file format is parquet with auto refresh equal to false. So when I run a select on this external table, what's, oh, it's written so quickly. So what Snowflake is going to do, a Snowflake query engine is going to directly reach out to the parquet file on the R2 external stage. It's going to load the file in memory in Snowflake, perform query on that file, and then show the results to the user. So here you can see all the results that are coming from the parquet file. This is really powerful because customers then who are paranoid or don't want to copy over all of the data from their on-premise devices to Snowflake, they can just keep the data on on-premises and they can use the power of Snowflake compute to start querying the data which is stored on the S3 compatible devices. Now I talked about Snowpark. So if you see over here, there are PDF files uh, that you can process using Snowpark Python. Now specifically, I'm not going to show a demo for that because one of my colleagues, Banu, he's going to record a video in depth about how you can process PDF files using Snowpark Python. But I'm going to show you one demo, which is a, an interesting demo, where I have um, images that are stored in my Cloudflare account, and I'm using the newly launched Document AI application to process these images. In the Document AI application, I have created a project uh, or created a model uh, using this project. I'm basically defining all these data points in the model. And what I really want to do is use that model and start processing images that are stored on Cloudflare. So all I can do is run this select command where appliances is the model and I'm running a predict function on the model uh, for all the images or actually one image that is stored on Cloudflare R2 account and the model is going to respond back with some answers. It roughly takes about 30 seconds or so to answer. So let's summarize what we saw today. So we saw how Snowflake can support unstructured files or blob stores, not only in say Snowflake or cloud provider accounts, but also on S3 compatible storage providers, which can be on premises or they can also be on cloud storage devices. We saw all the use cases that you can do using these S3 compatible stages. More specifically, you can copy files, you can query the data using external tables, you can process the data using Snowpark Python or Java, and lastly, you can use the newly launched, uh, announced Document AI application to run machine learning on your data stored on your S3 compatible stages. So that's it, thank you very much.